What's up Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone and welcome to a video predicting what is going to happen in the upcoming Friendly Face Fazbear Frights book uh, that is coming out in two days from when I'm speaking right now uh, on Tuesday. I'm always excited when a Fazbear Frights book is about to release. I mean I've done prediction videos on almost every book so far and my predictions have been very off on, on a lot of the stories but that's to be expected because a lot of the stories are going to be big surprises there's going to be big reveals and we're never truly going to know what is going to go on in these stories based on just the descriptions and the titles alone so um I might be wrong on a lot of this. And I know that a lot of people have this book early, I don't. Uh, obviously I get the online version of the book so that I can make the audiobooks. A lot of you are going to know if I am right or wrong, don't tell me in the comments. Um, no spoilers in the comments please, uh, preferably. Uh, I'm going to try and kind of guess what's going to happen in these stories. Uh, I have absolutely no idea because th the story titles for this one are very strange. Um, so yeah. Let's get straight into this. Make sure that you subscribe for my audiobooks and, and analysis videos when Friendly Face actually comes out because I'm going to be doing all of that in that week. It's going to be a busy week because I'm also moving to university uh, for the second year of university. Yay. <laughs> okay, so Friendly Face. First of all, let's look at the cover. Okay, yeah, this is probably the scariest cover of all of them. Obviously, we have all of the covers now, including Felix the Shark. I've done a whole video on that. But this cover is the scariest, 100%. Uh, before that, it was probably Blackbird. Blackbird was a pretty scary cover, but Friendly Face has a cover of Satan. It, it's literally a satanic cover. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm very scared as to what this is going to be. It looks like a cat merged with a human, which sounds a lot like a sphinx, if you think about it. Um, it could be a an actual sphinx. A lot of people are really disappointed because this story was originally supposed to be about Andrew, the Andrew from the Stitch Wraith, and we were all so, so excited to see his origin story, um, but no. No, apparently it's not about Andrew anymore, it's it's about Edward. So let's read this first description. So it says, act in haste, repent at leisure. After losing his friend in a terrible accident, Edward can't spend his money fast enough on a happy companion guaranteed to keep his friend's memory alive. That's very interesting to me. His friend's memory after a terrible accident that could be referencing the bite victim, because he had his frontal lobe, uh, or not his frontal lobe, because that was the bite of 87. Although, it could be to do with the bite of 87. Frontal lobe is to do with the fear response, I believe. Uh, I can't remember my psychology class. Uh, I know that like the amygdala is to do with emotions. I feel like that's in the... No, that's in the prefrontal cortex, isn't it? No, that's the, that's the perception stuff. I don't, I don't know. I don't give a damn, okay? Either way, this could be about the bite of 83 victim, or it also could be about the bite of 87 victim, and I really hope it is about the 87 victim, because it could tell us a lot more about that. We don't have that much information about it, other than the fact that it could be Jeremy, and it could be to do with the frontal lobe because the phone guy is very unreliable and we don't know. At the same time, I think the bite of 87 could have been replaced with the bite of 83 later in the games, but we won't talk about that today. I don't understand, I don't really understand. <laughs> I don't understand the context of this story at all. Edward can't spend his money fast enough, that's weird, on a, fre on, on a happy companion. Obviously happy is kind of like a, a synonym to friendly. Um, I don't know, is the happy companion like a cat? And the merging a guy with a I don't know. I, it's really strange. This story sounds like it could be one of the stranger stories in the entire series. Um, and I mean strangers in stranger than in the flesh. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm really, 
I'm intrigued. I'm actually intrigued as to what this story is going to hold, what it will mean for the lore, and maybe how it will fit into the Stitch Wraith and stuff as well, because that, that's, that's something I'm very intrigued on, whether or not the Stitch Wraith is actually going to end, like, in, in this series, whether or not it's, it's leading to something bigger, or if it's going to end, if it's going to conclude in this series of books. I have to say, last night I was on a call uh, to a few people, we were doing a theory discussion in my Discord, which you can join in the description below, and they did say that they have read the book, uh, they didn't give me any spoilers, which are very nice of them, thank you very much, uh, but apparently there's a lot of debatable things in this book, and by debatable things I mean there's a lot of lore but it's going to lead to a lot of arguments and stuff, so I'm very interested to see what this is all going to lead to. Uh, apparently the Stitch Wraith feels like it should come to a conclusion in, in, in Epilogue 11, so uh, I'm very pleased for that. <laughs> so the second story is called Sea Bonnies, uh, which is a very weird name. Mott quickly flushes his brother's creepy new pets. But the creatures have other plans. I love that. I absolutely love that description for this story. Uh, he quickly flushes his brother's creepy new pets. Okay, that's gonna be sea bonnies, obviously. Uh, I believe sea bonnies are an actual thing. Let me see if I can I can find on the internet what sea bonnies are. Let me see. Okay, so I mean, obviously we have the uh, the. Toy bunny uh, under underwater skin, uh, but we also do have sea bunnies in real life. Oh, sea bunnies! That's what it is. It's a sea bunny, and it's really weird. It's like this kind of slug thing, but it's also hairy, and it's got little ears. I like that. I feel like that is actually gonna be what is in the story. Uh, it's it's gonna be like little bunnies but underwater and like little slimy slugs and stuff. Uh, I wonder what they're gonna do. Obviously Mott is gonna be punished because he is the one who flushed his brother's creepy pets and I did I did emphasize brother there because you know at this point there's been so many Fazbear Fright stories uh, with brothers in it that I don't think it's a surprise that we've got another but yeah, Mott, Mott is obviously going to be punished here uh, by the pets for flushing them down the toilet. Um, I don't know how how they're going to to kill him or whatever they do to him, though. Uh, very interesting indeed. The next one is called Together Forever, and I am so excited for this one, you don't even understand. Uh, the reason I'm excited for this one is simply because of the name. Together Forever forever I mean I I feel like that is going to be the story that is the like the the mind-blowing one at the end the one with the big reveal the one that's really gruesome I feel like what I'm trying to say is at the end two people are going to be merged into one or, or five people are going to be merged into one or something like that and they're all gonna be together forever, yay! If that is the story, it was very predictable, and so it's not gonna be a great story because it 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 was predictable. But I feel like there are gonna be more twists to that, and I don't think it's gonna be just, oh, I wanna be with you, I wanna be with you too. <laughs> they're put together. Anyway, <laughs> so the description of this story is eager to put her classmates in their place excuse me, homecoming queen Jessica doesn't stop to double check her homework, reprogramming a defunct animatronic. Man, I... <laughs> See, I've been sick recently, therefore I haven't had many videos out, and it's slowly coming back as I'm talking. It's really weird, so if I sound weird, then I'm sorry. Uh, but this story, eager to put her classmates in their place, homecoming queen Jessica, so she's gonna be the one who is uh, getting battered and bruised by the Fazbear Frights, uh, the usual. She doesn't double check her homework. Always proofread, people. Uh, and instead of doing something else, it 
reprograms a defunct animatronic. So that's weird. It doesn't specifically say which animatronic it is. Um, I'm just trying to think of like, what animatronics haven't we seen at this point in the Phasma Frights universe. One that I really want to see is the puppet again, uh, with their own story. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get that. Uh, even something like with Lefty would be very cool. Um, I mean, thinking about it, we haven't gotten that many stories on FNAF 6, right? I guess you could say the puppet carver was about FNAF 6 because there was this guy who was making a pizzeria. And of course, we had like pig patch and stuff in that story. Uh, but I don't know, we haven't had a truly FNAF 6 kind of scrap animatronics kind of side of things. I would love to see that. It does say it's a defunct animatronic, so I would like to see who that is. I'm also confused about where the homecoming queen part of this comes in. Because like, sure, great, like you're the homecoming queen, but where does that come into the story? I guess maybe she's trying to show off because like, oh, I'm the best, I'm the homecoming queen. Uh, I don't know, I, I, I really, I'm eager to understand this story. I'm eager to read this story, that's what I meant. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, I'm really confused about a lot of these stories in this book. I really just, I'm going into this completely blind, really. I, I have no idea what is going to happen in any of these stories. Hopefully I'm right on at least one of them, otherwise it's going to be very embarrassing. And yeah, I cannot wait to read it, and I cannot wait to read it for you, either. <laughs> it sounds like I'm making a proposal or something. I'm not. I, I, I'm just excited to read the story as the audiobook, uh, so that you guys can get my reaction and stuff. I'm going to have to do it in like two or three days, because I'm going to uni on Saturday. So I have between Tuesday and Saturday to read the entire book and record it and upload it. So hopefully that's possible. <laughs> and then hopefully we'll be able to do some, some theory videos and stuff afterwards. Um, and actually thinking about it, this might be the last video I record here. Thinking about it. Like you may not ever see this setting again, so... You might, but if you don't, then just say goodbye. <laughs> bye. B bye, Fazgu. I'm not taking the Fazgu with me. Speaking of which, will this return? Will you return, Fazgu? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it will return in the epilogue. Speaking of the epilogue, we haven't talked about the epilogue, actually. But I'm gonna s I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to save that for the audiobook, because I, I don't think... I also know a little bit about the epilogue, so I'm not going to spoil it and stuff. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you uh, in the audiobooks or in the theory videos or in another video. So, <laughs> see you later. Goodbye.